If you don't have an American flag behind you when you talk, you ain't a real American, goddammit. Good to know. Where's your fucking American symbols, skull person, skeleton thing? Hey, that is offensive. We're skeletal Americans. Or soft tissue deprived, one or the other. I hate God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. Yeah, that is a pretty terrible song. You know the song I'm fucking talking about? Yep, we know. I'm proud to be an American. No, 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 we, we, we really don't need you to do that. Where at least I know I'm yeah, you, free. You, you really don't have to sing it, TJ. We know the and song. And I won't forget yeah, yeah, you don't the have, men who the, died. TJ, you don't, yeah, yeah. Pe 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 right people can, people can look up the lyrics, TJ. They don't need you to sing it. God bless the USA. Released in 1980 fucking four. How goddamn appropriate is that shit, huh? Actually, take it from someone who was alive in that time, it was actually a response to what everyone was saying about 1984. You see, everyone was talking about the book and we had all sorts of songs from Prince and Oingo Boingo and everyone else about 1984 is here and what we're doing is a surveillance state. But a lot of people were really glad that we weren't like the Soviet Union, which was that cranked up to 11. So that was Greenwood's motivation. It was better to be here than in the Soviet Union. Not a high bar, I'll grant you, but that was the idea. Does any other country on Earth have this embarrassing of a fucking song? Well, have you heard Advance Australia Fair? The National Anthem of Australia? Pretty sucky. And they had a perfectly good one, too, with waltzing Matilda, and it would have meant a lot more. I've been doing some research on the fucking song. Found this quote by uh, Lee Greenwood. America seemed like just like a rookery. The fuck is a rookery, by the way? It's a whole bunch of nests at the top of a tree. Yeah, I don't really get what he means by that either. I don't want to second guess him. I mean, he is a critically acclaimed wordsmith and all. So let me get this straight. All your shit's gone. All you got left is just your family. And the country that you're, you're the most glad to live in under those circumstances is America. Because personally, I'd pick a country with universal fucking health care, you know? So that if one of my kids gets sick, I can afford treatment for them because it's fucking free. Footed by tax dollars. Yeah, I guess that's not free. But if you're broke, you ain't paying those taxes. Wouldn't you in that case at least want to be living in the socialist country? Okay, now you're losing me. TJ, have you ever talked with any actual Canadians about how shitty their healthcare system is? Because I have. Yeah, it's free. When they finally get around to letting you have it, you're put on these long wait lists, and a lot of Canadians have had to come to America for life-saving procedures because the wait list was so long they'd be dead before they got around to it. And look at this. I'm going to play you some clips from Canadian news and commercials. Healthcare is a huge issue there. It's one of the top issues in every election. Take a look. Nearly five million people can't find a family doctor. <coughs> and I'm the only leader with a plan to hire the doctors and nurses that Canadian families need. Well, an overcrowded hospital has to use a donut shop as an emergency ward. And five million Canadians don't have a doctor. The federal government told the cancer agency it would not be paying for his chemotherapy. Sister Carol Borison is speaking for him. This gentleman's life was on the line and the amount of anxiety and stress that had been added to his situation was awful. ...is to encourage people who are seeking ER care uh, to, uh, if, if, uh, if they can use the, uh, the health line, and then determine whether or not they can be dealt with at a walk-in clinic. Again, uh, we have the health region estimating that 15 to 20 percent of ER cases can be dealt with at a walk-in clinic. He says, what is the government doing to ensure that we mitigate against this problem? 1,160 fewer health care workers under their regime, 450 fewer RNs from 01 to 06, 173 less doctors practicing during their last five years, 155 less pharmacists, and 95 fewer physios, Mr. Speaker. See, they're not saying, elect me and I'll make health care even better. It's, elect me and I'll fix this shitty system that isn't fucking working. In 2007, the Health Council of Canada released a report, Canadian Perceptions of the Healthcare System. 
In it, 71% of Canadians said that their healthcare system needs either fairly major repairs or a complete rebuilding from the ground up. Only 3% thought it was fine the way it was. And it's no better in the UK. Recently, the BBC produced a six-part series called Hospital, which looked at NHS trusts and the problems they have, including lack of bed space. You had surgeons and operating theaters just sitting idle while they waited for bed space to free up so they could do the surgery. That is the classic misallocation of resources you get with socialism. Too many operating theaters, not enough beds. And what was their solution? Turn them over to private hospitals who don't have those problems. And hey, TJ, you know what Tony Blair said to a woman who had pulled out seven of her own teeth because waiting lists were so long she couldn't see a dentist? He said, I cannot just produce more dentists. Yeah, lady, what do you think this is? Capitalism? There's no point in healthcare being free if the wait times are so long you never end up getting it. You want dentists? We got dentists. And chiropractors, too. What's up with that? See? That's the problem with American healthcare. It isn't a free market. Scam artists like homeopaths and naturopaths can set up shop easily, while real doctors face all these barriers government puts in their way. You can sell whatever kind of snake oil you want, as long as you call it a supplement, but state forbid you want to sell medicine that actually works. Then you have to go through upwards of a decade of testing and a billion dollars before you're even allowed to put it on the shelf. The problems of healthcare are caused by government, TJ, and you can't fix that with more government. Maybe I'd want to live somewhere where I could get government housing, you know, that wasn't located in a violent crime-ridden cesspool. Well, that's pretty much every country, TJ. And if anything, it's worse in socialist countries. You know what you can do here? Look at options for making housing cheap. There are people who have made housing out of discarded shipping containers. And some of them look pretty good. A San Francisco company has a robot that will 3D print in place a small house for just $10,000. You know where you can't do that? The UK. Where, despite a major housing shortage, politicians from the local council to Downing Street actively prevent this kind of inexpensive housing from being constructed. Better than government housing is reducing the need for government housing. And the only thing standing in capitalism's way of doing that is government. We can easily solve the problems you're talking about by ending the war on drugs and stopping the Federal Reserve from artificially keeping home prices high. Uh, let me ask you this. The flag stands for freedom, okay? So let's take a freedom test. Let's take a little freedom test. Uh, are you allowed to run naked down the street? No, but you should be. Are you allowed to fucking blow a horse in Times Square? Hey, as long as the horse is a consenting adult, I got no problem with that. Are you allowed to murder a hot dog vendor? No, that is an initiation of force, TJ. This is a false equivalence. The other two are things that don't harm anyone else. The third is an initiation of force. You are intruding on someone else's freedom. I'm constantly amazed at how many people don't get that. We hear this all the time as if it's a limitation on freedom. But TJ doesn't understand freedom any more than Greenwood does. This is what happens when you don't have a political philosophy derived from first principles. The freedom to do whatever the fuck you want. As long as it doesn't intrude on the freedom of anyone else to do what they want. Like sell hot dogs without being murdered. And I won't forget the men who died to give that right to me. Now I have a problem with this lyric that you didn't mention, TJ. Who gave that right to me? Rights aren't given. You're born with them. You might be able to argue the troops on occasion have defended our rights, but they don't give them to us. No one can give you your rights, and no one can take them away either. Only infringe on them. No one really wants freedom, folks. I do. People want their own freedom. Libertarians understand that the only way you can be truly free is to set other people free as well. That's why we advocate for the legalization of drugs, even though many of us don't use drugs. That's why we advocate for gun rights, even those of us who don't own any firearms. 
That's why we were the first ones in this country for gay marriage, even though most of us aren't gay. I think, TJ, the only person you're talking about is yourself. Like to rednecks. Freedom is like, I got the freedom to hunt, and I got the freedom to fish, and I got the freedom to fucking drink my beer and fucking hate queers and whatever. I got my guns. Most important right is the right to bear arms, man, because you know what? If the government rise up against us, that's their vision of fucking freedom. And what's wrong with that? And when it comes to the hippie vision of freedom... Which is fucking, I'm gonna smoke pot and I'm gonna do LSD and I'm not gonna take a bath and I'm gonna have sex with everybody and I'm gonna fucking do, you know, I'm, I don't need a job, man. I ain't gonna be held down by the system. Works for me too. Those two groups of people look at each other like with total contempt and hatred. And yet, in a libertarian society, they'd both be able to get what they wanted. Ain't freedom grand? Because they have different ideas of freedom. But they're not mutually exclusive. And by the way, the only reason rednecks are making such a big deal about gun rights is because government keeps infringing on them. And the only reason hippies make such a big deal about their right to smoke pot is because government keeps infringing on it. It's politics that makes this divisive. And there's the SJW idea of freedom, which is, you know, I'm going to be an agender fucking wolfkin, um... L-G-B-T-Q-A-Z-X plus minus exclamation point semicolon blue haired fucking entity with pronouns that can't even be pronounced by the human tongue. Some kind of Cthulhu-esque. That's my pronoun, bitch. And they get to do that, too. They just don't have the right to force anyone else into their lifestyle. None of them do. You know when we fought for freedom? We fought for freedom when we fought the British. And it really wasn't us fighting for it. It was rich white dudes. If you're not rich... That's why when they fucking set up this country, it was like white male landowners can vote. What you have to understand, TJ, is that they had a very different idea of government from what you do. In their setup... Only property owners paid taxes. No one else did. So it was the property owners who voted for people to decide how that tax money should be spent. And government was set up so that it didn't really affect the poor. They weren't regulating drugs or marriage or whatever else it was the poor were doing. They were raising money to pay for people to defend the country from invasion, to protect against pirates and counterfeiters. And that was pretty much it. A poor or working class person... A tradesperson or small businessman could have lived out his entire life not even encountering anyone from the government. And it's why those very same poor and working class people saw their economic situation increase at a rate far greater than anything that was ever seen before or since. We can't say that today, can we? Well, that's pretty much it for this video. By the way, my friend Mr. Dapperton also did a response where he made a lot of other points against TJ. Link is in the description. Check it out! Hey, if you liked that video, remember to hit like and subscribe, and if you want me to keep producing content, please donate or become a patron. Also, please check out Dapperton's response to TJ's video, and my video on Universal Healthcare.